Okay. And from time I'll just get up every once in a while and check to see that it's working. Well, like all flies, we'll start off and get our lacquer on the hook here. And uh, <clears throat> then put our thread on. I'm working with monocord, which is the heavier, strong thread for this. Now, how, when you tie that end off, when, I, when you put this on, how do you keep that from slipping off at the end, when you first, the first loop you make? I wrap over it. You just do it once, then you wrap over it. Wrap over it, it can't go anywhere. Uh -huh. And each, each wrap progresses down the shank, mm -hmm. of course, all the way down to the bend. And you just wrap uh, right Of course, over another it. thing that helps to hold it is the lacquer mm -hmm. that's on the shank of the hook. If I'm tying on tinsel, I try to be careful about tight wraps. In other words, each one abutting closely to the one before, because tinsel, again, is going to be wrapped tight, and if you don't put your thread on nice and even and tight, and then you're going to have gaps. If I'm putting on dubbing or something, or something else, chenille, I don't have to worry about the darn thread. I can leave the gaps there and so mm -hmm. on. Okay. Well, Why did you pick that color as opposed to black? I prefer, I've become uh, of the mind that tan and gray are more compatible with fish colors than black. Uh -huh. And so I prefer that. I still use black for some of the flies. Okay, now if you're wrapping tinsel, normally they'll recommend, I'll come in here and get about, let's see. And of course we put silver tinsel normally on the uh, Hornberg. Come in and get a, get a good 10 inches or so there. And normally we put a double wrap on uh, those flies that have a tinsel body. I tie that in along the shank, come up here and make a couple wraps catching that right there. Then I can clip the excess up here off. Okay, <clears throat> then I make a couple more wraps to make sure that I've got that snuff. Then begin to wind my tinsel all the way down to the bend. Again, trying to make each lap tight to the one that went before. Do you overlap or you just keep it next yeah. to it? I try to keep it next to it. I found it overlapping. Uh, it's a little trickier and it doesn't always take. Especially this, this is narrow, mm -hmm. uh, medium. If you're working with the whiter stuff, you can overlap and get away with it. Now, some fellows, Roger, will, will, well, not necessarily cheat, but to abbreviate it, they'll tie in <clears throat> tinsel at the bend and run it up, mm -hmm. just, just one coat of tinsel. But it's recommended to, it does two things. It'll cover any of the gaps you may have left, and also <clears throat> it'll give you a stronger body. So I'm coming back up. And by doing that, I should catch any gaps that I might have left. And again, I'm going to have a stronger body for it, and less chance of it being split and chewed up by the, the fish when they hit it. So I'll bring this up to the thread, and then secure that by crossing over it with my thread a couple of times. And now that can't unwind on me, then cut off the tag end. So that's the uh, technique of applying the tinsel. So you don't tie it off near the hook, you just keep wrapping all the way down, you wrap back. There's no, no. special turn you make at the end of that. No, to no, keep it from slipping. no, get it up. Always leave a lot of room behind the eye because you're going to be tying in the hackle or maybe mm -hmm. wings in a hackle. Okay. Now the underwing on a Hornberg, most commonly, I used to use uh, yellow calf tail and then somebody f was trying the red and they said that that was seemed to be attracting the fish better than the yellow so I've been using red more commonly than I am the gold. And what I do is simply come into the uh, calf tail and separate out a little patch of that try to get it about, about an inch long and then clean that up some of the stray hairs here <clears throat> okay. Now I'm measuring the length of this, and my technique is to bring my thumb and forefinger in, lay the calf tail on here, 
and let the calf tail maybe a little bit longer than the shank of the hook. Maybe, as you can see, the longer ends are about a quarter of an inch. Then I come in with the left hand, thumb and forefinger. Are you familiar with a pinch loop in securing stuff on top of the shank? No. Now th <clears throat> this is a very important step. If you, if you try to wrap stuff like this, Roger, this way, generally you can see what's happening. Mm -hmm. It's going to generally push it down and then you f end up fighting it and struggling until you finally maybe lock it into the top. If you bring your thread up between the thumb and the finger and pinch it, then down the other side, exerting a lot of pressure with his forefinger so this can't go down, mm -hmm. your thread will come down on top of that and it'll pin that very nicely and I do it two or three times, two, three, and there's my wing yeah. tight to the top. That's the pinch loop, coming up, pinching between the thumb and the forefinger, having a thread go down the other side here, pressure with the forefinger here, tight against it, bring the thread down on top, when you feel it hitting there, then snub it. Then I back off a little bit and come in and make another one or two wraps, <clears throat> make sure that's nice and tight. Okay. Then, of course, we get rid of the excess up front here. Again, always trying to be mindful of keeping that eye open. We don't want to cover that. <clears throat> All right. Now what you're probably interested in more than anything, Roger, is uh, putting on a wing. There are two ways of, of putting on uh, wings on a hornbird. The latest method is doing it with one feather. Now, when preparing my feathers, I come in and take a feather like this, and I want to end up for, for a size 10 hook with maybe a feather like that. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm going to use on this one feather hornbird. Clip it, leave about a quarter of an inch of the stub on it, get rid of that. Now, if I were tying it with one feather, what I would do would be simply to position this on top, like that, come in with the thumb and forefinger, and push this side down with a forefinger, and then down on this side with a thumb, then come up and tie that in in that manner. Now I've got feather on each side, on that side hmm. and on this side. This is what we call tying, tying it tent style. One feather being crimped down on this side by the forefinger and the thumb on this side. I prefer the other method, the old method, which is as follows. I go to my feathers and again prepare them in the same way. I'm going to use two feathers. I'm cleaning off this stuff down the lower part here. Getting it ready. Why I like it, to me, I don't know, I got used to it. Uh, it's always worked. This is my number one fly. And uh, I just feel that this technique is, is a little buggier in a sense, is a better attractor of fish. Now with two feathers, all right, we get two like this, bring the one in on this side and lay it alongside here, and I've got that of a length. I try to leave a few of the underwing feathers exposed so that I've got that color out there. Now I come in with a left thumb and forefinger and pinch that right against the shank of the hook come up and make my soft loop here and there is the feather for this side. Now I'm going to do the same thing only I'm going to go to the other side and match that up. So I got my feather all prepared. I, I find using moisture like this is an awful big help when I'm working with things, particularly the feathers. Bring that in Lay that along the side, match it up, 
pinch again with a forefinger on that side, the thumb on this side, come up, make my pinch loop around here, tie that in, and I've got my wings. Okay, and that's the toughest part of the Hornberg right there. Okay, now we're simply ready to put on a uh, hackle. And I'm using Grizzly uh, for mine all the time now. What I do is come down and I look in this area here. That's about, there's no specific uh, size to the hackle with a Hornberg as there is with uh, some of the dry flies. So I'll come in and get one of these down here and pluck that out. Okay. Now in preparing the hackle, of course what we do, and I think you're familiar with this, is we get rid of the junk stuff, the fuzz, down at the bottom. I'll pull, I'll look here and see where is the poorer part of that feather, pull that down, I want to get rid of that, and then cut it and throw it away. Now before I tie it in, generally I will pull down these fibers on the lower quarter inch or so and cut along those and I leave little barbs and that'll help that feather stay on that hook a little better than if I cut it clean to the rip. So I've got little projections as you can see. Mm -hmm. Now we know this is the inside of our fly, that's the dull side and I bring this dull side facing the shank of the hook where I want to tie it in. Make a couple of wraps where I want to tie it in, over it like that, two or three. Now I've got that well secured. Now I'm ready to go to work with my hackle pliers. So I've simply laid that along the shank, tied it. Okay, grab hold of the tip of your hackle. Jelly, you're going to straighten it out like this and then commence to wrap around the shank of the hook in the manner that I'm doing it here. One, two, three, and how many, anywhere from two to five wraps. Depends on the length of your hook. Okay, I've got, I think I've got five wraps out of that. Now I pull this over here and I've got to tie over the end of that feather so it won't unravel, so I make a couple wraps over that end and then come in with my scissors and cut that stub off there. Now generally quite often at this point there are some of the fibers sort of sticking out toward the front and to push them back at this point, I usually come in with my bodkin and make a half hitch loop and knot and bring it in and tie that in and that will push back any loose fibers that might be there. I make just one or two of those. Now I've got a good clean head that I can finish up with. So I'll come in. Are you familiar with this little thing here, Roger? Mm-hmm. The it's, it's sort of act like the, like the spoon, doesn't it? Yeah. Now, same idea. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I don't know whether you were or not. I don't use it all the time, but I put it on just to see, uh, check and see. Okay. With that, of course, we can push our feathers out of the way there, hackle out of the way, and we've got a clean shot at tying in the uh, head. Okay. <clears throat> I got that tied in. Now I'm ready to tie it off with my knots. And I'm going to, I, I finish most of mine with uh, half hitch knots. Of course, a better knot, as far as many fishermen goes, is the whip finish. And I've got a tool for that. But again, with a half hitch, we simply make our loops and come in. That's a single loop. You can make a double loop. That's going to make it even a little stronger. And I read recently, if you make two triple half hitch knots, you've got the equivalent of the whip finish knot. So you could do that. One, two, three, bring it in, slide that off, and do that twice, 
and you've got the equivalent of a whip finish knot. Okay, there it is, and then of course we always finish off with a good dab of lacquer here, to, which is the glue that holds the feather together. And then the last act, of course, is to a lot of the glue sometimes or that head cement gets in the eye, come in with a needle and dub that out. And it's a good idea to do that later on because sometimes that'll still leak some down in there. Then come in and make your cut. And there's your hornbird. Mm -hmm.